Hi everyone, and welcome back to day five of the Tamarack video sew along. We've got a big day today. It is quilting day. For a lot of garment sewers, this is going to be the most foreign part of the process, unless you have some quilting experience. Fear not though, we'll walk you through with ease and you'll soon be wanting to quilt all sorts of things. If you missed the lessons on cutting or sewing up your darts, just click back in our Tamarack jacket playlist for those videos. Now let's get started quilting. I know a lot of you are mainly garment sewers and not quilters, so I wanted to take a minute and talk a little bit about a few basic quilting techniques you might find useful if you're making a Tamarack jacket. In the Tamarack pattern, I talk a bit about something called the quilt sandwich, which refers to three layers of fabric. The first is your quilt top, this is the outside of the piece you're quilting. In our case, it's the main fabric. You'll want this facing up as you quilt. Below the top is the batting, and below the batting is the quilt backing, or in our case, the lining. So the wrong side of the lining will be facing the batting. There are many ways to baste your quilt sandwich. Hand basting, safety pins, and straight quilt pins are the most common. With any method, I recommend starting at the center of your piece and working outwards towards the edges. This way, you can make sure things are in alignment and your fabric isn't moving one way or the other as you work. Hand basting is a great way to secure your quilt sandwich together. It's easy to quilt over, there's nothing to get in the way of your machine's foot, and it'll stay put until your quilting is complete. It is slightly more work than the other methods, so I like to use a combination of hand basting and basting with safety pins for my Tamarack. Using safety pins is a very popular method of basting. They stay in place nicely and won't fall out or poke you as you work. You can also buy special quilting safety pins that are curved to make placing and removing them much easier. The one issue with safety pins is that you will need to remove them as your machine foot nears them to avoid the safety pins getting stuck under your machine foot or your machine foot bouncing off them and going crooked. The final basing method that I see used a lot is using straight quilting pins to secure your quilt sandwich layers. Aside from the fact that this method does allow for some shifting between layers, since the pins have no way of securely closing, you run the risk of the fabric getting stuck on the pins, the pins sticking to you, or them just falling out as you quilt. For something as small as a tamarack, you'll likely be all right using this method, but I definitely do not recommend it if you're quilting a full-size quilt. To begin, we'll create our quilt sandwiches. Align the three layers of fabric so they're smooth, with no bunching or ripples, and so all edges match up. So here I have the lining, and you can see I'm working with the darted front. So I'm going to align the corners. The dart line matches up. And just gently work until everything is aligned. And this does have the dart, so it's a little bit fiddly but I wanted to make sure I demoed on this one. Now take your main fabric and lay it over top. You can see the dart is again aligned. Your edges align. And just gently get everything lined up nicely. Then pin around the edges to temporarily secure the jacket layers. You don't have to get too involved. I'm probably getting too involved right now. <laughs> Basically, I just want to pin these together so I can flip the jacket over and make sure everything is still aligned on the back. 
So here you can see everything is nicely aligned. There's a chance that your three layers might be slightly off, um, but don't worry too much about that. So now I like to flip my jacket back over so the right side is facing up. Now using a needle and thread, I'm going to make two small stitches where the pocket placement is. That way we don't have these pins in our way while we're trying to quilt. You can just line your pattern piece up later um, after you've quilted to remark the pocket placement, but I'm trying to set a good example here. One, and two. Next, I like to hand baste two anchor lines through the jacket. I use these as another matching point to make sure things are aligned while drawing my final quilting lines. To do this, I start by drawing a line from the underarm to the center front. This line should be perpendicular to the center front. Then I draw another line from the shoulder point where the neckline and the shoulder meet down parallel to the center front and grain line. So you can see this is the zero to 18 pattern. There's no dart. So this is easily accomplished because the pattern is completely flat. Now for the 14 to 30, we have our dart. So you can't just draw a line straight across parallel to the center front because it won't hit the underarm. And then same thing here, it's not going to be parallel to the front. So what we want to achieve with this, is we want to kind of pull a trick of the eye where we gently curve the line so that when you're wearing it, it looks parallel to the floor and it will gradually get less as we reach the bottom and it will just be straight across. And same thing here, we'll just go straight and then pivot when we hit the dart point. So it's easier to see on a ham. I can't draw on a ham, so this is how I do it in real life. Not that that's not, but I just kind of pat the area I'm going to draw on as flat as possible. and then draw a line over to the dart and then just pivot slightly so that the line is parallel to center front. Then again, this will be easier here because parallel to the line we drew and then up to the shoulder point And then from here down, we're going to go parallel to the front. So the easiest way is to measure over. So this line is five and a quarter inches over from the center front. Kind of lost my line right there a little bit. measure over and then just continue the line down. And now flat, it looks a little off, but 
when you put the bust in, they look straight. This is how I quilted all of our sample jackets and it worked great. So now we have kind of this mess here. So the reason we're going to baste is so that we really anchor these in place. I don't want these guidelines moving at all while I work. So now I'm taking my quilt basting needle, threading it with some thread. We're gonna hand baste along the lines we just drew. That way everything is anchored. You can see how easily this could move around while you're working. Um, and even with safety pins, like I just want this area to be very controlled. And the same thing goes for the zero to 18. I always hand baste through those as well. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail because I don't want it to come out. And then just keeping your piece flat because you don't want to be manipulating it while you're basting or things can move around. Just insert a line of running stitches and you can see mine are pretty large. You don't have to get too small with this because you're going to be taking them out later. Just gonna baste across the length of the jacket. And you can see already why <laughs> straight pins are a pain. I'm already catching them. And that will just keep happening as you're at your machine working. Um, so basting or safety pins is really my preferred method. And you want it to be taut, but don't pull on it. We don't want anything gathered, just nice and smooth. And I'm just using polyester thread for this. I don't really care. Um, it's going to come out stuck again. Now here we're getting through the sort of lumpy part where the dart is. So just as you stitch, make sure what you're stitching is smooth with no lumps or bumps. If you can feel a bump, just go around to the other side. Make sure it's nice and flat and continue. These lines that we're basting in now are going to become the guidelines for your main quilting pattern. If you're doing free form, um, free motion quilting, it's less important to have these guidelines because likely things aren't going to be matching up at the side seams. But if you're doing a larger pattern or something geometric, it can be really nice to have these so you can make sure that your quilting pattern matches from front to back to sleeve. And these won't rub out like chalk and again, they just really anchor everything in place. So continue doing that until you have both of these lines stitched.
After you finish the front, you're going to do the same thing for the back and sleeves. As you can see here, I have a line running from the underarm, the center of the sleeve, and then down from the shoulders at the back. The reason I didn't do the center front is because I want this line to match up with the front in case you want your quilting pattern to continue over the shoulder. But if the center back is a more important reference point for you, you can do that instead. After your jacket pieces are sandwiched together, we'll need to quilt them. If you have not decided on a method and a design for your quilting already, here are a few things to think about. There are many ways you can choose to quilt your pieces. The main methods being machine quilting, free motion quilting, or hand quilting. On our Tamarack jackets, we use straight line machine quilting. There are many different and interesting ways to quilt using straight lines. I highly recommend making a few test pieces with your garment fabric and the batting you intend to use so that you can get an idea of what works. In swatch one, we did a basic diagonal diamond pattern. Each line is one and a half inches apart from each other. Swatch two is the same pattern, but on the straight and cross grains rather than the bias. You can see how different the two techniques look just by stitching the same pattern in different directions. Swatch three is one of my favorites. It's made by stitching vertical lines one and a half inches apart from each other. Then when the whole piece is stitched, going back over the piece on the 45 degree diagonal to the straight lines. If you've got a quilting machine on hand, you can definitely try free motion quilting. My machine has something called a free motion foot, which allows you to move the fabric around under the foot and essentially stitch freehand. It's completely unnatural for me and I find that keeping the stitches even without a stitch regulator is almost impossible. <laughs> I have to say that this is something that, in addition to having a quilting machine, requires quite a bit of patience and some practice. You can see in swatch one, my first attempt in the lower squiggle. After practicing, I managed to get swatch two, which is a bit better. <laughs> it's really fun trying to get it to work though. And if it's something you're already good with or are open to using your jacket for practice, it could really open up your possibilities for quilting. Hand quilting is another great option for your jacket. With hand quilting, you're able to use so many different thread options, from regular cotton thread, to thicker pearl cotton, to sashiko thread, and more. Those thicker threads can really give a lot of visual interest and texture to your jacket. Once you know what method you're going to use to quilt your jacket, you'll need to decide on the quilting pattern. Is the main fabric of your jacket pieced or printed? Consider complementing that by quilting around the motifs in a way that sets them off. You can go geometric on a solid piece of fabric or soften a denim with swirls of free motion quilting. We've created a set of design sheets for you to plan your jacket pieces that are available for free download in our shop. You can easily print these out and draw across all of the pattern pieces to get an idea of what quilting pattern you like and then use that as a guide when you start working. Now we're all prepped to quilt our tamarack pieces, but before you dive in, I highly recommend testing out your thread colors, stitch lengths, and quilting patterns on a scrap of your quilt sandwich. Make sure you're testing on the same three layers you're making your jacket from as the thickness can affect how the stitching appears. You'd hate to test on a single layer, nail down something you love, and then find it doesn't transfer to the sandwich properly. If you're still having a hard time coming up with your quilting design, check out the hashtag Tamarack Jacket on Instagram. There are thousands of beautiful jackets you can peruse to get your creativity flowing. Once you've got your stitch pattern decided on, it's time to mark your pieces and stitch. As when quilting a quilt, you'll want to start in the center and work outward. I only mark a few lines at a time as the movement of the machine and your hands maneuvering it under the foot can wear away the outer lines of chalk if you've drawn them all in right away. So you can see I have an all over print on my jacket. So I'm going to emphasize that 
and I'm going to quilt through the centers of these um, white motifs and then through the centers of the diamonds. So to start, rub that away real quick. I'm going to start towards the center. I'm going to quilt through these lines here. So I'm just drawing in where I'm going to start quilting. And I am going to be doing a cross pattern. So I'll be quilting this direction first, and then I'll come back and quilt in this direction. And here you can see how I'm sort of bending the pattern of my quilting to match the pattern of the fabric. And again, once that's on the bust, it will appear straight. I'm just going to start with those three lines. And what I'm going to do now is use my safety pins to base around the stitching lines. This helps to further ensure the fabric stays where it is as you work. So just between these lines, I'm going to pop in a few safety pins. Again, making sure it's flat where I'm pinning. You don't have to get too crazy. Um, I'm just popping in a few on either side of the dart so I can just be sure nothing moves around. And I'm going to start removing my pins at the side because I don't want those to get stuck on anything as I quilt. You want as smooth of a line as possible while you're quilting. That said, <laughs> I have found it's almost impossible to quilt a truly straight line while quilting on a standard sewing machine. If you have a long arm and your quilt is secured into a frame, sure. But <laughs> on your sewing machine, it's just really probably not going to happen. Um, and that's fine. It doesn't happen for pretty much anyone I know. Um, the great thing about quilts is once you wash them, they kind of crinkle up into a really nice texture. That also makes it appear like you sewed a perfectly straight line. So do not get caught up in that. Don't be seam ripping a bunch of junk. It's going to be a pain. Okay, so I now have my entire piece based in. Um, you can see you don't really need that many pins. I put less in above and below where I'm quilting. I do just use a few extra at this bust point because don't want that moving around. So now we're going to head over to our machine and we're going to stitch over the lines we drew using a walking foot. You're going to want to make sure you have a walking foot for this. Otherwise your fabric can shift um, again due to the fact that the way the sewing machine works is the feed dogs move slightly more quickly through the machine because of friction on the foot. Um, so a walking foot negates that. I'm going to slide my fabric underneath and I'm just going to start quilting across. I don't recommend flooring it on the quilting. Um, my machine limits the stitches per minute um, based on what foot's on there, so it will only go as fast as the foot can handle. Uh, but I'm not sure if any everyone's machine does that, so keep that in mind. Okay. 
as you approach the bust point. Just again, make sure everything, oops, sorry, is nice and flat. And continue stitching across. I then clip my threads and return back to the point where I started. Now I recommend stitching everything in the same direction. Um, you can get a bit of shift while you're sewing and you don't want um, the fabric to be going like this if you go one way in one direction and then back the other way. And then we have our first three lines of stitching. So now we're gonna head back over to our table and mark in the rest. You can remove these safety pins now if you like, or you can do it later, completely up to you. I'm gonna remove them so it's a little easier to see what I've done. And I'm just gonna clip off these threads because I like to keep things nice and neat. Now we need to draw in our next stitching lines. And here, these are going to be in the way of my foot. So I'm just gonna take them out while I draw and I'll replace those. One back in the shoulder. And you're going to continue this process until your entire piece is quilted. Once your piece is completely quilted, we're going to take out our basting stitches. There may be some points where you caught the thread in your stitching. You can just kind of snip those out. There's another one. And then in the opposite direction. I don't know if you can see here, I forgot to stitch one line. So this is also a great time to go back over and make sure you've actually sewn all your marked points. So once everything is sewn, your basic stitches are removed. We're gonna stitch around the outside of the piece using a quarter inch seam allowance. So that will be inside of the assemblies and binding seam allowance. 
And this just ensures that everything is stuck together and forces all three layers to act as one as we assemble the pattern. Okay, now here we are. I'm going to be stitching around using my quarter inch seam allowance. Now repeat these steps for each pattern piece in the jacket, and then you're all ready for your pockets. Alright, that is it for today's lesson. I have walked you through how to quilt your pattern pieces, and now you have the weekend to get them put together and quilted before next week, where we'll be working on the welt pockets, patch pockets, and making our bias binding. If you have any questions, as always, let me know in the comments below, and I'll get back to you ASAP. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you don't miss any of our video updates and I'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye.